Hey everyone, it's Dr. Erin here, one of the good doctors of Abbey Research, and I would like to welcome you to our third video in our Good Doctors Reading Month series for the month of October. And last week, Dr. Kristen had a really fascinating uh, video on some Scandinavian women writers who you may or may not have heard of. Lots of talk about crime fiction, which was really cool. And for today's video, I am supremely excited to be talking about a few of the very many Native and Indigenous women writers that exist in the world. A little disclaimer for this video. Um, one, a couple disclaimers. One, you'll notice that I'm looking down at my notes regularly. Uh, this is a lot of information that I want to get right, so just bear with me. Two, there's going to be some context before I get going into my recommendations because this is a really important topic and one that I really want to be respectful and sensitive to, um, particularly uh, in terms of referencing these women and where they are from and what their cultures are and all of these uh, things that are important to get right. Um, so I hope you stick with me through all of it. It's going to be a little bit longer, but I promise it's going to be rewarding and I've got some really exciting recommendations for you. So, first of all, you know, context number one, um, anytime we're talking about uh, a cultural background, it's important to remember that it's not in any way monolithic or the same. And that's true for the Irish women we talked about, obviously the Scandinavian women, um, there's a lot of diversity between Norwegian and Finnish and Swedish cultures, and then within those national uh, identity blocks, there's a lot of diversity and difference. So and it's, we're talking about always individual women and where they come from. Um, and that's very true for uh, our very broad topic of Native and Indigenous women writers. I'm focusing on women from North America, um, as, but there are Indigenous people all over the world. Um, but it's really important to remember that every tribe, every nation, every band, every group, has its own distinct language and culture and history and identities that are important to them. Uh, within the United States alone, there are over 562 federally recognized tribes, um, which is problematic because the United States decides what is and is not a tribe. Um, so there are way more groups than that. There are state recognized tribes and there are groups and communities of people that define tribalism or nationalism or nationhood very differently. Um, and so I want to start by recommending uh, a fabulous woman, if you haven't heard of her, Matika Wilbur. Matika is from the Swinomish and Tulalip tribes of Washington. And she is currently in a project called Project 562, where she is documenting as many um, Native, Amer Native American, Indian, indigenous, uh, groups as she can as she travels around the United States. She's already documented uh, close to uh, 700 different tribes, nations, and groups in her five years of work. Um, and I'll make sure to link to Project 562 in the very expensive, expansive uh, show notes below. Uh, so I'll put the link down there if you want to um, learn more about her. She is an a artist and a photographer, so she is photo documenting all of these human beings uh, and her photographs are stunning. So under this big broad tent of Native and Indigenous writers, I am talking about five women from very specific cultural backgrounds that I will introduce um, that are a part of uh, what we would call Native and Indigenous peoples. It's always really important to pluralize those uh, there is not one kind of Native American or Indigenous person or Native person or First Nation person. Um, they all references should always be plural because it's, there's just so many um, different and wonderfully diverse kinds. And one of the most powerful gifts that we have uh, is the gift of literature because it gives us the ability to individualize and humanize people and cultures that we might not yet know about. So in this video, I'm going to be doing my best to speak respectfully about each woman and their heritage. Uh, I will honor their voices by using their descriptors, how they talk about themselves and their identity. Uh, what I've learned in my more recent attempts to educate myself 
about the histories and cultures of Native and Indigenous peoples is that obviously uh, they are as wide ranging and as diverse as every other cultural or national groups. Um, but their histories and identities and cultures have been oversimplified, stereotyped, misrepresented, and erased uh, by a mostly white and Western oriented historical record. I grew up in Colorado um, and had a relatively socially conscious education. Um, and so I was taught about uh, both the history of the indigenous people from that part of the country um, and was taught about uh, the horrors of the Sand Creek Massacre, which was one of the worst massacres uh, on US soil um, that took place in southeastern Colorado. Uh, and I was exposed to a lot of histories, but and also contemporary uh, experiences of the Native and Indigenous people in my region. But I recognized that that was still a huge gap um, in terms of of knowledge uh, and exposure to all of these different ideas. But the good news is, the internet uh is a wonderful place for information there's a lot of information about these authors i've included all of their personal websites uh in the show notes where i could find them and there's a lot of information about tribes and nations and bands many of them have their own websites which obviously i would encourage you to go directly to um so you can seek out information about uh these people and their uh histories and traditions I encourage you to find out uh, about the native and indigenous land that you live on. I would like to recognize that I grew up on the land of the Hikaria Apache, the Cheyenne and the Ute people, and that I currently reside on the land that belongs to the Osage people. Um, and I really encourage you to find out about that land. There's a great resource, again, links below, catching a theme here. Um, called nativeland.ca that has uh, an imperfect but expansive map of what the native and indigenous land looks like on what is now considered North America. And if you're looking for a great starting off point, I would really recommend the article 100 Ways to Support Not Appropriate from Native People by Oglala Lakota and Chicano journalist Simon Moya Smith. Again, link below. But let's talk about books. Full disclosure, I haven't read any of the books or authors that I'm about to recommend, but I look forward to learning and growing through their stories. Uh, some of them I own, some of them I don't yet own. But let's get cracking. My first author that I want to introduce is Janet Campbell Hale. She comes from the Coeur d'Alene Kootenai, uh, Kootenai I'm going to do my best to pronounce these uh, the way that I've looked them up on Google, but I'm white, uh, Kootenai, a Cree, and Irish heritage. She grew up on the Coeur d'Alene Reservation in Idaho and the Yakima Reservation in Washington. Her parents' identity and her uh, relationship with her own Native identities is a huge part of her work, and which kind of broadly explores uh, Native American issues, poverty, and women's issues specifically. She published her first work in 1972 in a collection of poems by Native writers, but the publishing of her master's thesis, The Jailing of Cecilia Capture, uh, in 1985 was a really big turning point for her writing career. This book was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. Um, I think I paid more than $3.98 for it on Amazon, um, but it is definitely available for purchase. And then uh, her uh, another book I want to talk about, because I own it, um, uh, Bloodlines, Odyssey of a Native Daughter is autobiographical and was published in 1993. And Bloodlines won the 1994 American Book Award and is considered uh, a really important addition to Native literature and literature by women of color. She has taught at many universities all around the Pacific Northwest and she currently lives on the Coeur d'Alene Reservation in Idaho. So that's Janet Campbell Hale. My second author is Therese Marie Myatt from the Seabird Island Band, a First Nations band in British Columbia up in Canada. Uh, Therese graduated from the Institute of the American Indian Arts with an MFA in fiction, where she studied with the writer Sherman Alexie, who's another very uh, famous and well-known uh, Native author. 
I've read several of his books. He's fantastic. So I really recommend uh, finding a couple of his books. Uh, one of them, Smoke Signals, was made into um, a major motion picture as well. She's the Saturday editor at The Rumpus and was recently named the Tecumseh Postdoctoral Fellow at Purdue University. And the book I want to talk about um, that Trez wrote, Trees, oh, sorry, um, is the best-selling, New York Times best-selling Heartberries, which is a memoir. Um, it's really creative, uh, creatively written and styled. It has an introduction by Sherman Alexie as well. It's only about 100 pages. I haven't read it yet, but it's pretty close to next on my list of books to read. Um, and it covers her upbringing on the Seabird Island Re Indian Reservation, and then obviously a lot about her family relationships and marriage and children and all that kind of stuff that happens to human beings. Um, but what's particularly um, gained a lot of attention for uh, Trees is her discussion of her mental health issues as well. Uh, so Heartberries, also on Amazon, very easy to find. Um, and from all accounts, a fabulous book. Number three on my list is a woman named Linda Lagarde Grover. And she is a member of the Boys Fort Band of the Minnesota Chippewa Tribe in Northern Minnesota. But she is the, on the American Studies faculty, American Indian Studies faculty, excuse me, uh, at the University of Minnesota Duluth and has published loads of different styles of writing, poetry and prose and historical research. Uh, and a children's family history guide. So she's all over the show. She uh, calls herself an Ojibwe, which is the name of her tribe, uh, grandmother and elder. She's a traditional powwow dancer and storyteller. And she writes that she, quote, encourages all Indian people to continue the stories and traditions that have been the foundation of our survival as a people, to live the good life and to share our voice with the world. So awesome. She's fabulous. Uh, for her book, I chose her 2017 publication, and I'm gonna try my best to pronounce this, but I'm white. Uh, uh, Onigomising, Onigomising, uh, Seasons of an Ojibwe Year. Onigomising is the Ojibwe Indian term for Duluth, uh, and the word roughly translates to the place of the small portage in English. As happens with uh, Ojibwe language and lots of native and indigenous languages, vowels and consonants don't sound the same as they do in English. Uh, so this is the closest approximation um, to how I can pronounce it as an English speaker. Uh, and the book is described as 50 short essays where she reflects on her spiritual beliefs and everyday practices about the Ojibwe people um, throughout the year and everything that connects them specifically uh, to the land in which they live in northern Minnesota. So I'm really excited uh, to read that. I love the idea of following the seasons uh, of uh, people uh, to see how they relate uh, differently during those different times of years. The fourth one I'm going to talk about, fourth author up for you, is a woman named Caitlin Curtis, who is an enrolled citizen of the Potawatomi, Potawatomi Citizen Band Nation. Uh, and self-identified Christian. She also describes herself as a writer, a speaker, a mama, a partner, and an avid coffee drinker, which I think makes her uh, potentially very good friends with Kristen, Dr. Kristen, should she ever meet her. Uh, she writes a lot about the intersectionality of uh, spirituality and everyday life. So the book of hers that I chose is called Glory Happening, Finding the Divine in Everyday Places. Um, and it's also a collection of essays and prayers from uh, Caitlin's life that focus and center around this idea of glory. I know Dr. Kristen, I think she's read Glory Happening, I'm not sure, but I know she's a lot more familiar with Caitlin's writings than I am. But I do follow her on Twitter, she's an excellent follow, uh, and I have gotten a great sense of her philosophy and her writing through what she tweets, and I'm really excited to read Glory Happening when I can. And my final author is Dr. Kim Tallbear. Dr. Tallbear is an associate professor at the University of Alberta Faculty of Native Studies and the Canada Research Chair in Indigenous Peoples, Technoscience and Environment, which means I think she's a badass, even though all our women are. Um, but that's a, that's a lot of serious 
uh, titles that she's got there. She is an enrolled member of the Sisseton Wapetan Oyate tribe in South Dakota. Pronunciation, my best. Uh, but she's also descended from the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes of Oklahoma. She was raised on the Flandreau Santee Sioux Reservation in South Dakota and in St. Paul, Minnesota by her mother and her grandmother and her great grandmother. So the book I want to talk uh, about that Dr. Tallbear wrote uh, in 2013 is called Native American DNA, Tribal Belonging and the False Promise of Genetic Science. Um, DNA and uh, native identities and tribal memberships is a hot button topic these days if you've been paying attention to the news. The book looks at the way that genetic science uh, is co-constituted with notions of race and indigeneity, which is a really fancy way of saying uh, it looks at uh, kind of this issue of using DNA in this great wave of ancestry.coms and 23andMe's that we've got going on but using DNA to claim a cultural heritage. Um, and I've been spending a lot of time reading Native and Indigenous and Indian writers and journalists who are talking about the controversy over DNA results and, and blood testing as a way to prove or disprove membership or citizenship in a tribe or a nation. It's a really longstanding controversy uh, within these communities because this, con this idea of blood quantum or you know, any type of value that is placed on Indian uh, blood was used by the United States government uh, to remove people from tribal memberships uh, as a part of a much larger policy of assimilation and erasure. So it's really controversial, it's really problematic um, and very, very complex. So uh, her book, Once I Discovered What It Was, has climbed up the old Amazon list. I'm really, really keen to read it. Um, and for those of you that have been following the 2020 uh, election campaign, uh, you might know about a Senator Elizabeth Warren's controversial claim of Cherokee heritage. It has been in the news a lot, less so lately, but over the summer, um, and particularly when she announced her candidacy uh, and made a video claiming uh, Cherokee heritage and uh, possibly membership or some form of citizenship. If you want to learn more about that specific issue, um, I would find the written work of Rebecca Nagel, who is a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, and Julian Brave Noisecat, who is a member of the Canham Lake Band, Cheskin, and descendant of the Little Watt Nation of Mount Curry. Um, you can just ask the Google, uh, but I'll include their um, websites and Twitter handles in the show notes as well, but they've been writing a lot about this. Rebecca specifically as from the perspective of a citizen of Cherokee Nation and what it means for uh, Senator Warren to have made these claims. Um, and some writings about Senator Warren's uh, apology over the summer at a native uh, forum for presidential candidates that was held, I think in South Dakota uh, over the summer. So all that information is available on the internet for you if that is something that piques your interest. Whoo, that's everything I have was a rather lengthy chat, um, but really important uh, to explore these uh, phenomenal Native and Indigenous women writers. If you're looking possibly for even more Indigenous, indigenous authors, um, I've included one more link to a blog written by Caitlin Curtis recommending 25 books by Indigenous authors. I'm currently reading one of those books right now. Hold. Um, the book is elsewhere, but this is the cover for it. There, there by Tommy Orange, and it's absolutely brilliant. That's on Caitlin's list, I know. I think uh, Heartberries is. I'm pretty sure that's where I heard about Heartberries. Um, as always, I said this three or four times, but it bears repeating. Uh, there's lots of show notes below. Click, click the links, click the links and read for yourself. Um, all the fabulous stuff that I've mentioned. Dr. Kristen is going to be back next week to finish up our reading month where she will be talking about Asian women writers. It's going to be really good. We hope you've enjoyed these recommendations. Uh, comment below with your thoughts and suggestions. And if you know of any Indigenous writers or Native American Indian writers or from more Indigenous people from wherever else in the world uh, that you want to shout out to me, please recommend them. I'm always looking for new ones. 
But for now, I'm Dr. Erin. I'm one of the good doctors of Abbey Research, and we'll see you next time. Bye!